We're going to start a new series. I called it one thing, now I'm calling it another, so Kevin knows this. Um, uh, it is going to be called Completing the Harvest. And uh, the Lord had been stirring on my heart uh, through evangelism, through all the different things that are going on in our lives, and, and watching the, the church grow and, and change taking place, to talk about how to complete a harvest. Um, the body of Christ has a way of not understanding harvest to begin with. A lot of churches don't teach on harvest, whether it be harvesting a soul or whether it be a financial harvest, whether it be emotional or spiritual harvest. Uh, many times we'll get one aspect of it, but we don't have the rest, or we'll just focus on doing that one thing and not know what the next steps are. So I feel like uh, just taking a few weeks on this and talking about it um, is important. And I want you to see, and I know the Holy Spirit wants you to see who you are in all of this, who you are in harvest, who you are in the call of God, who you are in the church, and who you are to him. I mean, if, if we don't, you know, see who we are, uh, then we don't see where we came from. When we don't see where we come from, we don't know our purpose. And we're just wandering around. And, and uh, especially the generations coming up, they use a term whenever I'm talking with them, if you're just talking about emotional stuff, they say repeatedly, I just feel lost. I just feel lost. I just feel forgotten. But truly, I just feel lost. And, and it's a very frustrating spot to be in. At one time, I was truly lost and didn't know who I was. And, and um, you know, just in, in my identity in Christ, I didn't know who I was. I knew there was a God, but I didn't know who I was to him. And I actually didn't know who he was to me. I just knew that he was. So there's a, that's kind of how that one laid out. And, and uh, so I, as coming into the, the kingdom in 1981, uh, there was some teaching on harvest or sowing, and I'm sure there had been before that, but it was all new to me. And I, it, was, it was like a foreign language, like a foreign language to me. And um, what we know is that what we sow, that we will also reap, yep. right? And so there, we know that in harvest, there's sowing, right? This, you're sowing seed into the ground. In harvest, you're sowing into your family. You're, you're, you're sowing into the kingdom. Um, you sow into yourself, even by what you say. You sow seeds into yourself. And this is, it's, it's important in that part, and Pastor's done some talking regarding that, because the words we say are, are huge. <laughs> They're, they're seed. They're seed that can bring a harvest, right? And they find their ways of completing. I mean, the devil really likes to help a bad harvest take place. I mean, he's got some workers on it, right? He whoops them into shape, and they are on it, they are on it, they are on it to bring a negative thing to pass. But when we go to bring a positive thing to pass, many times we'll do part of it, and then we don't want to attend it, or we're not sure what we're supposed to do next. And, and there's a lot of things that can wreck the harvest. We can plant something and sow something even by saying something out of our mouth, God, I believe in this. This is what's going to happen. Two minutes later, we're trash talking, right? Yep. We all do it. I've done it. So, you know, there's the party of it, right? Um, and so in, in that, we've got to understand that, that whether it be sowing words, sowing financially, sowing uh, um, our time, whatever it is that, that is seed, uh, that's going to go in the ground. It goes into the ground and it starts to grow. And then what? Many times we don't know what to do next. Now, I, I being raised on the farm, I mean, we had a dairy farm, so it was a little bit different harvesting going on. We did have to bring in wheat and corn and all that kind of stuff. My, my husband was raised uh, uh, where there was a whole lot of wheat and a whole lot of sunflowers. I mean, many, many acres of, of that. And, and knowing the process helps me to understand um, there, there's a start and there is a finish and there's a whole lot of stuff that happens in between to bring in a harvest. And this is where um, the financial harvest has gotten a bad name because I, I, I came into the kingdom when uh, there was a lot of uh, prosperity talk, right? And even when we say that, we can say it in a negative way. It's like prosperity talk. Like it's something really evil. I mean, it's like, we wouldn't want that to happen to us, right? There, there, there is that kind of thing that's, that's, that's going on. 
there was a lot of teaching, and uh, yet there was a lot of weird stuff that came out of that teaching. Now, here's what I found, though. When I went to, to find out, you know, why do people do this, or why did they do that, the, the weird part of it, um, they'd always say, well, that's what Kenneth Hagin teaches. That's what Kenneth Copeland teaches. That's what Jerry Savelle teaches. That's what I could just keep naming these worldwide ministers who know how to harvest. And uh, so I was like, whoa, they must be really off. But then how does this work? How, does this, how, do, how are they so prosperous in all the things and souls and in all the different things that they do? And then somehow they must be teaching something. I just got confusing. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go right to the source. So I started listening to Jerry Savelle. And the things he said, they said, people said to me, this is what they said. They never said that. Uh, Kenneth Copeland, uh, people will say, um, this is what he said. Yep, he teaches on this or whatever. I, li I have listened. I can't find those teachings. What they heard filtered through their own flesh, and they misconstrued a lot of it. Now, I'm not saying all of that teaching, you know, everything was perfect. Uh, you know, when I teach, I'm sure there's some stuff off. Just so you know, a little disclosure on the bottom. Um, so I'm <laughs> just so you know, I mean, I mean, I can look back at some of the stuff I preached 10 years ago, and I'm like, I actually don't believe that. <laughs> we got to get rid of that series or whatever it is, because God's revealed some things, or I grew, or whatever the thing is. And so here we, we, we have this good word going out, and there's good ministries, I mean, tons of good ministries walking in this principle, and God is prospering them and he's prospering their lives, and there's all kinds of different things happening. So something must be off with how people received. So we have to be careful that if we ever want to be an expert on something, remember I said where you say, well, that's what they teach. Well, now you're an expert on something you've never actually researched. You might have turned on the TV, heard a phrase, and said, yep, that's that thing they're teaching. But when they take apart the Greek and the Hebrew, guess what? When I did it, I found the same thing. I found the same thing that they're teaching. It's in the Word. Amen. It's in the Word. So we have to be good students of the Word when it comes to, to seed time and harvest. Our focus many times is on, I want to learn how to bring in a harvest. I want to learn how to lead people to Christ. That's a harvest. I want to learn how to have a good family. That's a harvest. I want to learn how to... Well, harvest is the end result. If we don't start right, we won't finish well. So there has to be something to studying sowing. There has to be something to, to that. So a lot of what we heard was testimonies through the years of, of huge harvest stuff that happened. It was like, whoa, that church was just granted a building for free. This guy just wrote out a $100,000 check. And Keith Moore has um, a conference that, I mean, their body is poised and ready. It, you don't know if you come out of that conference, your, your house is paid off by the time you're done. Right? Because they move in that gifting. It's, it's awesome. I mean, and, and they do. There's houses paid off all the time, debt released, and they believe God for that part that that will, will take place. Then they turn around out of their, their increase, and man, they sow into the kingdom like crazy. Um, so there's something to sowing, but we'll look at that and we'll be like, that's crazy. That's a crazy harvest. Well, what brought that to that crazy harvest spot? What brought that to that radical thing? Um, you know, there was a story of, of a young person who uh, her friends would always go by her window and she'd be doing piano lessons, right? And they, and they would say, hey, why don't you come on out and play? Come on, come on out and play. And they would just say, oh, so rude, her parents. They just keep her working on that piano. That's just, that's what she's doing, blah, 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 blah. And... Um, kind of criticizing where she was going. But she herself, as a little girl, wanted to learn how to play piano because she knew there was, some, there was a gifting in her that was alive, and so she did it. And she sewed to that time after time after time. She could have been out playing, but she was there at the piano. Well, then there has to be adults. You know how you graduate, and then you kind of find out what people are doing. She became very famous as a, a, a concert uh, pianist on, and being able to be out there playing the piano, and then when they came and listened to some of the stuff that she did, they go, oh, this was the comment. They said, I wish I could do that. Yeah. You just missed the whole thing it took to bring in the harvest, yeah. 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 right? And sometimes it's our view, how we, we see things, um, you know, that, that's blocked. We're not seeing the whole picture. 
or we just haven't been taught. So let's take a, a little look. Um, at Galatians chapter 6, we're going to go, and uh, we'll go to verse 7. Do not be deceived and deluded and misled. That's those three things, the Amplified. I like that. You're going to be deceived, deluded, or totally misled. God will not allow himself to be sneered at, scorned, disdained, or mocked by mere pretensions or professions, or by his precepts being set aside. And this happens a lot when it comes to seed time and harvest. He inevitably deludes himself who attempts to delude God. For whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. So we pull that scripture out once again and we'll go, whatever man sows, that's what he's also going to reap. And uh, we don't look at that first part that says, do not be deceived and deluded and misled. His principles and how he runs this thing, he's not going to be mocked. doesn't matter if it's your profession is what it says or pretensions or people's attitudes or whatever. This principle is going to go down no matter what. It's going to happen no matter what. But when we pull that scripture out all by itself, mate, it's negative. It's a negative thing. Well, you know, for whatever a man sows, that's what they're also going to reap. That's so sad. Usually that's how we use it. Um, you will hear it used more in the church with that negative feel to it than you will be like, you know what? That which we sow, we're also going to reap. This is going to be good because there's a fear attached to the fact of we're not sure what we're sowing. And then some of the things we know we sowed, we're like, yeah, we shouldn't have sowed that. Right? That's where the term I sowed my wild oats comes in. Right? We can take a portion of our life and just sow to the flesh. And then you end up reaping stuff from that, don't you? Because right? the devil will make sure. He likes, a, he likes just the fact that when we sow and we sow and we sow, and he's like, this is how he works it. Don't worry about it. We'll bring in the harvest for you. Okay? You just lay there. You just watch TV all day. You just drink till you're, you're blind and you're in your head. You just do that. We'll take care of the work for you. That's how he farms. He makes sure the demonic farms for you, right? Yeah. They're out there, man, and they're good farmers at that. But when God's kingdom works, it works differently. It's, it's that, whatever a man sows, that only is what he will reap. Then we should grab a hold of that principle and be like, Lord Jesus, what can I sow? Because yeah. I'm going to reap this, yeah. right? And um, I ask forgiveness for any sowing that I have done that's just poor, poor seed, poverty seed, sickness seed, trash talk seed, all of that kind of stuff. And the blood of Jesus will cleanse you. So he looks at our heart and he knows that we're farmers and that we're, we're creators because we're created in his image, right? We're in the God class and we speak things just like he does. Yeah. And we harvest things just like he does. But if we're not uh, paying attention uh, to the fact that what we sow, that was we're also going to reap, well, then just anything goes. But if we're, if we're going to try to plant the good seed, there's still some things that will come out. And I believe God looks at that like my grace comes upon you because your heart's intent is to not say those things, is to not do this. As long as your heart's intent is like, God, help me change how I sow out my mouth. Help me change how I handle finances. Help me change how I work in my family, whatever it is. And then he's working there. You've given him full right to just be all over that like white on rice. He's going to be over that. And that's how the spirit of God will begin to move on you. But when you're over here and you go, God's here, and then I just do my own thing, and stuff's coming out your mouth, be sure the demonic will be there to help you out. And you just sit still. You, you're not really obligated to do anything. Right? They'll make sure you get a poor harvest. They'll make sure the harvest thing that comes your way will be horrible. Yet, when we go to operate in God's farming, he requires something of us. Right? Yep. You want to prosper financially? Amen. Yes, you be obedient to the tithe. Amen. You be obedient to offerings when he tells you to. You be obedient to the alms that he tells you to give. But guess what? You don't get up and work. You got no money. Have you noticed that? That's true. 
There's something about there. There's a missing sequence. Or you don't put yourself in a spot where you're responsible. Even, even for those people who, you know, there's some tragedies you've gone through and, and you have to work in the system in order to do this, you still get money into your hand and you have to steward that in a proper way. Yeah, right? right? There's, there's all those different things that require something of. So here the devil doesn't really require anything of it. You know, you just go do whatever you want. We'll take care of the harvest. And the angels are standing in a different farming. And they're like, we're waiting for you to announce the word of the Lord. We're waiting for you to use your faith. We're waiting for you to actually get up out of bed and go do something. Yeah. We're waiting for you to put the time in the works part of it. We're waiting for you so that we can come and minister alongside and you activate the word of God and we can be right there and helping you, right? But guess what? We still are the farmers. Yeah. Amen. Where in the devil's kingdom, ah, you just, you just lay there. You just get high and lay there, right? You just go sleep with the neighbor and just lay there. We'll take care of the harvest. You don't worry about it. We, we well take care of our people. See how his kingdom works? And then as soon as we come from that kingdom over into this kingdom, it requires so, it's like, bleh, you just feel like, oh my goodness. Sometimes this is just such a, a freedom you get in salvation, but sometimes it's hard because we're, we're working this thing. We're sowing so that we can reap yeah. and we're attentive to the harvest all the way down. Yeah. So for whatever a man sows, that and that only is what he will reap. For he who sows to his own flesh, lower nature of sensuality, will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. But he who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. So you can, you can sow to either side, right? And you're going to reap either way. Let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. Because see, part of sowing and then going to get a harvest is you got to do what's right. It's that next right thing you have to do today. It's the next thing that you have to do today that's right. That's going to bring you into the next part of that harvest, uh, preparing for it. So acting nobly and doing right, for in due time and at the appointed season you shall reap, if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. So we have to take apart that. So we know that, that when we sow, the very thing we sowed, we're going to reap like kind of that. Yeah. You sow hate, you will reap hate, right? Exactly. Or the action of that. Um, and you sow love, you're going to receive. You're going to receive things in that, <laughs> that realm that you probably can't even wrap your head around. Um, and so we know that seed time and harvest works that way. You don't plant an apple tree. You've heard this over and over and expect oranges. You expect apples. That's just how it works. And so we know that whatever a man sows, that he's going to also reap. Then we come down, and, and if we float, sow this to the flesh, we're going to reap decay. And if we sow to the spirit, so decay subtracts from you. Something breaks down. It's always breaking down and subtracting. That's the way decay works. Uh, but he who sows to the spirit, will the spirit reap eternal life? Well, eternal life, we're looking, we many times take that and we go, yeah, that's once I die and go to heaven. Eternal life is now. Amen. Yeah. Just because I'm standing in here in this earth crate doesn't mean I'm not in eternity right now. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. The same way God was and always will be. Yeah. Right? There's no, I, I, all it is is I, oh, I got to take my suit off, but I'm still standing here either way. So it's a, it, it, it's a perception many times that we have off. And, and so Eternal life means right now we're going to reap that in the way the Spirit, who is holy, will bring those blessings in that way. We'll, we'll reap how heaven is. This is why we pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it already is in heaven, right? Even though we're standing here and the barrier is our earth suit, it's still eternal. I'm going to live forever. People go, yep, I'm going to live forever. Well, already I, I'm living forever. Yeah. Amen. There's just only my earth suit can only stay on me so long, but I'm living forever, right? I was created and I'm living forever. I started that eternity process. It's, 
it's weird when we, what, what kingdom we sowed into or what kingdom we want to reap a harvest off of. And let us not lose heart and grow weary. So with these things in mind, you don't want to, you know, because here's the part. A lot of us have sowed and we're still waiting for the harvest. And it's like, come on, God, I've been farming this field. Come on. And you can actually go into unbelief if you allow yourself just by getting weary. By getting weary on that, that harvest, we have sowed, so we shall reap. And then we're going to reap in due season. In due season is when we're going to reap. And let us not lose heart, grow weary, and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time, at the appointed season, is how the Amplified says, we shall reap. Doesn't say we might, oh, we're going to reap. That's just how it's going to work, right? And so you have to settle that part before you ever, uh, you know, if you decided today, which a lot of farms are going out of business, you decided, well, I, I'm going to go farm. Well, just that thought of farming and planting fields and all of that kind of stuff, grains and corn and all that, you have to have in your mind and in your heart that, oh, yeah, I'm going to reap. Yeah. Or why are you buying this farm? Why did you buy the cow? Well, because milk will come right? That's just why we bought the cow. Um, why, why did you put seed in the ground? Well, because it's obvious it's going to grow and we are going to reap. But if you don't have that settled when it comes to your family or those types of things, even if you've had things you've sowed to that are bad, you are now part of a new kingdom and there is forgiveness and, and there are some plows running over that, yeah. right? Yeah. And so at the same time, then we began to speak things that are not as though they were to get that sowing to take place in our new ground that he's given us. And, and so we can't get weary in well-doing, though, and stop because we're just on the brink of a harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's some things I'm harvesting now I planted 20 years ago. Yep. Do you know that an oak tree, I just learned this this last week, an oak tree will not produce acorns that will produce another tree until it's 40 years old. Yeah, I didn't know that. I was like, oh. <laughs> so one side I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And the other side I was like, oh, because I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if some of these are acorns <laughs> or these are oak tree kind of things that I've planted. But either way, you got to settle. Now, I, I know that I can put radishes in and it, it's within a three-week period of time. I have radishes right. because that kind of seed just produces now. It's like now you can replant the radishes. Right? Corn has a certain season. Apple trees got to get up and running. But here you have the oak tree, and it's going to produce after itself once it's 40 years old. So each thing that we go after in our life has a due time and a due season. Each thing. They're not all in the same category. Right? So, so sometimes you got to work for something a little bit longer. Sometimes you got to speak over it a little long. Sometimes really when not, you're, you're not really creating a new oak tree, right? If you plant an acorn and you're, you're, it, this starts to come to pass and you're waiting for that 40 years and you didn't know it was 40 years and you're after it and you're after it and you're after it. When you go to do that, what ends up happening is somewhere at, around, well, for most of us be year one, we're like... Come on, like I'm waiting to get this thing moving so we can produce more and it's just, it's taking some time. Uh, but if we know there's some things that take time and some of those bigger things that will end up in the end being a strong, mighty oak in your life. The scripture says that, that uh, we're like oak trees planted by the water. Amen. We shall not be moved. Right? But you don't, you don't just take a radish and go, yep, I'm going to base my life on that. I mean, it'll grow in a few days, and then the rest of my life, that'll be my foundation. It's like, no, you better oak up if you've got, you got to do this whole life here. There's a war going on here. You need to be mighty in God. And, and so those things take time. That means you don't grow weary and, and well-doing where you've been you've confessing things over it. You're watering it. You're making sure the weeds are out of the way. You're doing all of this kind of stuff. But many times we'll get, you know, even three months into it and we're like, seriously, it's hardly out of the ground. That's going to be an oak tree? Come on. And we start trash-talking it. 
And then you know what it does, as soon as you trash talk something, what it, what it does is I disdain you, therefore I will not attend you. Yeah. Right? If I, if I said that about, well, I got one plant in the garden that I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> I don't even weed around it. <laughs> I'm just confessing about my little plant. It, there, there's, there's a thing that just goes, oh, you know, I'm not able to figure out what your problem is and get you growing. And it'll cause you to push away from attending that then you won't be an attentive farmer. You started farming, you planted some things, but this ain't coming to pass, so whatever. And it takes us a long time to come to grips with the fact that there is a due season coming. And if you stop acting nobly and doing what's right is what the Amplified says, because you're like, well, what am I supposed to do in the in-between time when I'm waiting for this harvest, when I'm waiting for this thing? Do the next right thing. Do the next right thing. Sometimes we don't look at the next right thing the, the right way. Uh, you know, you want to establish a household. You get up in the morning and, uh, and uh, it can be the small things. It might be that your dishes have flies coming out of the sink. You might want to do the next right thing. Well, that has nothing to do with where we're going. I'm believing for this. Over yes, it does. All of those little things are attending the process of heading toward your harvest. Right. Yep. Next week, I'll, I'll see if I can um, play a video of uh, a, an oak tree, and it gives you, it's a time lapse, you know, have you ever watched those where a flower blooms real quickly or whatever? It's crazy how little and tiny the seed is and how much it works to even get a leaf out, you know? And then it comes up, and it's like out of the ground, and, and you look at it, and you would never recognize it, that that's going to be that mighty oak. It just looks like this little thing, and it looks vulnerable. A deer could walk by and that's the end of that, <laughs> you know? I mean, something could eat off the top of it. It needs to be attended to. And so that's what ends up happening with us uh, and anything that we're believing God for. We have to attend to it. Yeah, and you attend to it by speaking the word over it. You attend to it by paying attention, by bettering it, to just, just taking care of your farm well, taking care of what's coming out of you well, so there is a due season. Now, when you look up the word due um, time or due season, it gives the example, I shared this in prayer this morning, um, of, of an apple. The word picture for it is a, of an apple. When you come up to the tree, you don't just pick anything at any time. You're looking to see if it's, in, if it's ripe. Yeah. This is the ripe moment. Oh, we're going to harvest. Amen. There's an exciting feeling about that where you're just like, woo, you know, look at the buckets of apples. Well, because you went out there and you checked and you checked and you're so close, you're so close to this harvest, but it's still not the due season yet. You've got to wait. And then in that due time, you'll come up and you'll be like, it's a ripe moment. And the Lord will say, pick it, pick it, bring it in. So some things you'll see almost seem like they happen overnight. Yeah. There's other things we're believing for. It's an oak situation. Yep. And so if you get discouraged by that, then it's like, well, I don't want to have to wait that many years. Or I, don't see, I don't even know if I want to farm anymore. That's the feeling that'll come off of you. You'll, you'll disdain the fact of the harvest because some things take time. And uh, farmers know this. The more you, you can understand that, the more you'll give yourself the reality check and just permission to not freak out if it's not in the timing you want, right? Um, it's an appointed season we shall reap. And, but we're only going to do that, it, the promise or the, the condition behind that, it says, if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. Exactly. So there's conditions to this. Yeah. We have to be attentive. And then there's the condition of the, don't relax on this. Oh, it's out there. It'll be fine. You know, you plant a garden. It's fine. Just leave it. You're not being attentive to it. I'm just relaxed about this. I, I, I don't know if it's going to produce anything anyway. Well, we'll see. And that's the way we talk about it. Well, then we're not going to reap in due season. Something's going to die off. Something's not going to be taken care of well. So a lot does count on the fact of being good stewards with everything God has given us. Yep. Yeah. So let's put that, that acorn back up there. And then I think we have a picture you can flash to the picture of the tree and maybe go back and forth between the, right? I'm not sure what we have, but anyway, there's the, the oak tree. So 
that little thing, when you think about it, I could sit right here in the palm of my hand, ends up being that. That little thing. Now I'm going to be so brazen to say you, sitting here, you know, like me, standing here uh, at five foot seven, um, I came from a seed. A seed that I can't see. You know, you have to look at it under a microscope to see the fullness of that seed. And I'm standing here. Yeah. Right? It's taken this long for me to get to this stature, to this point, but it came from something so tiny. Yeah. And if we don't pay attention to the seed being the, the major, then um, it becomes a minor thing. We just want the harvest. We just want, I just want to go to Dairy Queen. I don't want to have to clean my room. That would be a kid's way of saying, hey, I guess what? You better seed for that. Be obedient and go do what God's or your father's asked you to do or your mother's asked you to do. Then you can get the harvest in the due time, right? And a lot of times, though, we don't see that there's a bigger picture. There's, there, there, there's something inside that seed. We don't see how precious the seed is. That's why we don't watch our mouth. That's why we don't uh, steward our finances many times that way. Because we don't look at um, the five bucks. God tells you to give five bucks to a certain missionary or whatever. You can go, yeah, I'll give five bucks. Take your wallet out and lay the five bucks in there. No biggie, just plopping it in or whatever. You know, because I like to help out. I like to help out. You, you don't know what's inside that five bucks then, do you? That's seed. Amen. We don't handle our finances like this is seed. Somebody asked me if my husband and I gamble, you know, um, and, you know, they want to get into the big debate. Is this God? Is that not God? And I really don't care because I don't participate. But, but my, my one thing is anything that takes your passion away from God, anything that takes you down a road where you're not stewarding yourself, right? Get out of. I don't care what it is. Get out and leave it now. But, um, you know, a couple times we were, we were out to eat at a, a, a casino because they have the best food and, um, and big buffets or whatever. And, and so, you know, we said, ah, oh, let's try this. I just get frustrated and, and walk away. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any pull toward it. And, uh, and so you even take your five bucks and you, you throw it at it, right? It's just a game. It's like throwing, your, throwing it at a video that you want to watch on TV or throwing it at, you know, some extra ice cream you probably don't need to have at, at Dairy Queen or whatever it is. We, we throw those things out of it, but if we really paid attention to the fact that it is God who gives us the power to get wealth. See, we're so indebted, like, I worked for this, my paycheck, I can do whatever I want with it. We have that belief system. And, oh, yeah, you need some help, I'll help you out with my money. It is God who gives me the power to gain wealth. It is God who moves me ahead. It is God who do, does these different things. And, and, and so when we are in that spot and we look at it like this is seed, it'd be like carrying around a bunch of acorns and being like, you can put that in your pocket, but think, I mean, could you carry around a bunch of those trees? No, you can't. Oh, that's the harvest that's coming. But we don't realize that's what's in our pocket. If a, if a man, I'll just be brazen enough to say, you go around sowing your seed to anybody and anyone, right? There's a seed time and harvest that comes with. That's what our society just, I don't know, I slept with this one, I slept with that one. You're scattering your seed, And there's a harvest that comes for that. You know, it makes it rough on the baby. It makes it rough on the, the, the woman. It makes it rough on all the situation involved. But it also says, you don't see that this tiny little, I can't see it with my eyes seed is about to join with an egg that's going to produce a destiny. Yeah. That's bigger than the oak tree, yeah. right? There's something about holding a newborn baby where, where the reality of life, oh, there's a future in my hands. There is like, a, we don't even, wow. I can't even wrap my head around it. I guess we're just going to focus on changing diapers and, 
and making sure it's fed and, and loving on the little person and all that kind of stuff. But there is a destiny and that destiny will affect all kinds of other people's destinies. How many people do you know? And how many people do you know over the years that you either loved or you walked all over? You affected thousands, yeah. right? Well, where'd you come from? Seed time and harvest. And um, so when we don't know that we're, we are the seed of God that has come to pass, and we're out in relationships where we just sow seed, just whatever. And, and for women, we're just adaptable soil to whatever comes along. See, this, this is tough, but it's truth. Um, then, then what kind of harvest, what kind of farm, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? We're messing with destinies. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Now, we are in, in like image of God. We are, he's a creative God. We're creative beings. And so in some ways, we can be creating a mess. Yep. Right? Nice, you got a baby, another person in the world, but that baby's going to affect all kinds of people. And how you treat that seed and how you are there or not there for it is, is going to affect a lot of people. We look at it like, well, that's just in my family. That's just you and I. That's just... No, we're talking about affecting a lot of people. Yeah. See, but we don't see what's in that acorn. We don't see what's in that seed. And so we handle our finances that way. We, we handle how, how we, we do all kinds of things that way. And, and I think there's a fear. Even just talking about, um, I like to talk about giving because I like to reap. <laughs> so... Good Lord, I want to know how to sow, and I want to sow well, and I want it to be exciting, and I want to sow joyful, and I want, I want it to be how God says to sow. And we should be excited about it, but there's more fear attached to finances than many times any other thing. Anything that touches our, our, our checkbook is, well, well, ah. And yet, that's like reading the scripture um, that says, for whatever man sows, that only is what he will reap. That's like reading it negative. Whatever you sow, you will reap. No, whatever I sow, I am going to reap. And this is going to be good. I am going to plow through this and put seed into the ground on behalf. You know, we got some churches that are going to be built through this ministry. But guess what? I don't know if you got it. But when we gave to Pakistan, we sowed. Right? So what are we going to reap? Buildings. Buildings and lands, buildings and lands. We're going to reap that. Otherwise, this is this is the world's way of looking at. It. Yeah, it was a charity thing our church did. You know, we gave to them. They're so poor. It's so sad. What? Yes, they benefited on their end. And praise God, I know that John turns around and he plants out of that. He goes, look at the harvest we believed in, right? Because you know what? Over there, you would think, well, how do they have all the money to sow in order to get that harvest? They're laying down their lives. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Church, not that long down uh, the road from them, 100 people that blew the whole church up, right? 100 people dead. They're laying down their lives for this. They're sowing whatever seed that they can. And here came this huge harvest. So then wisdom would say of him, take the 10%. Take this amount or whatever it is and sow again. Amen. And sow again. That's seed time and harvest. That's good farming. Yeah. But we, we, we're more afraid of it, afraid of being controlled or afraid of being out of control, whatever it is, um, with our finances. And, and sometimes we just scatter. So if you got a gambling problem, I'll tell you, that's scattering your seed. Yes, it is. That's God giving us the ability to live in this free country where we get either helps from the government or we get helps through a job or we get avenues that doors open where finances can come into our hand and then we're just scattering our seed. And usually the talk is um, something like, yeah, you know, you got those rich people. Have you ever heard those conversations? Maybe you've been in that conversation. You don't want to acknowledge it, but I'm just saying. It's like them rich people, you know, they just want to dominate everything. They just, and that's just how it is. Like kind of how we talk about the government. And every time we talk about the government like that, we're sowing seed on our government's behalf. 
I don't want to harvest some of the things that have come out of my mouth in this country. Yeah, we have to, we have to rein that back. So here we are. In due season, we're going to reap. And then, but the, the stipulation is if we don't loosen or relax. Loosen or relax. That means you stay on it and you don't have, uh, you lose your courage or faint is the other one it says. That's why we need encouragement, right? Because sometimes we've been farming something and this thing has taken a little bit of time and here we are now and it's like, I'm getting tired. And so you come in the prayer line, right? And what is that? You don't faint. You don't take back what, you're, what you've planted. Don't take back what you've planted. This is God's seed and he gave it to you through the word, whether it's a word you planted or it is what you put into the ground or what you put into another ministry, whatever it is. And you stand here saying, oh, I've done all therefore to Stand and I'm going to stand, but I need some courage. Help me out here. So that's what prayer lines are for. That's what agreeing with your covenant partners are for. That's what the word of faith is for. So then you come away from it and it like gives you courage. Like what you shared um, during the offering, that scripture you started out with this morning, it was like, ooh, that's a hot one. That is a good scripture. And, um, but I could see it brought you courage. Right? You, you read that. Why do we need that? Because that's that stabilizing factor. That's that thing that says within us, I now have the courage to continue to do the next right thing. Yeah. I'm not going to faint on this one. Right? I'm not going to faint on this one. I'm not going to lose the harvest. And you have to be tenacious about it. You have to sit in that um, kind of spot or your farm's going to go down. Yeah. That's a good word, right? It is. It's like, this is how the kingdom works. This is how it works. And we can pretend it doesn't work that way, but guess what? It still works that way. <laughs> so we, we have to know how to farm. And we have to know uh, what we're carrying. You know, young people, when you go to decide to have a child, you are carrying within your bodies the life of God. And you are deciding we are about to be a part of creating this is what's going to happen. And, can, and then you look at your farm and you say, how much of this can I manage, right? Right? Some of us manage bigger farms. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you've got one child, two child, ten children, or whatever. We manage bigger farms. But as long as it's good farming, that's the point for your destiny. As long as it's good farming and, and we don't faint and we don't lose the courage that it's going to take now to take that seed that has now come into this world and it's growing and it's changing to get it off into its destiny. That's your fruit. Yep. And it's going to produce after its kind all over again. So how we start something is very much how it ends up finishing. And so it really is something we, we, we just got to stop and think. This is what sowing's about. So... So you take your finances, for instance, and you're, and you're going to sow. I've had so many different people asking me questions in the last few weeks because I talked just a little bit um, about uh, um, giving and the different types of giving and things like that. You take that, and, and there's the feeling of, well, I don't know if this is going to bring me a harvest. I'm not sure. There's a fear stuff when we release it into the plate. When we, when we write out the check, when we go online, and we, there can be this fear of like, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Well, I, I can tell you what, when farmers, especially when they are going to plant a lot of wheat or sunflowers or, you know, uh, like Burns family, did, I mean, that's a big chunk of change. You're not just going and buying a little bag of something to plant. You know, You're, this is like we're bringing it in truckloads. This is going to seed. This is going to take a long time to get that seed out. There is that apprehension of like, okay, I <laughs> hope it grows. Hope it's a good year. And we can get behind the seed in the way of, of like we're putting it out there, but we're putting it out there in fear. Rather than saying, thank you, God, for this seed. We're putting it into the, the, the cedar and we're putting it in and we're getting the field ready. We're making all the preparations for this seed that we now have that is so precious that we're going to put into the ground because we already know it's going to produce. It's going to produce after its kind and that we're going about to reap it and it's going to go or when it comes in in the end and we're about to sow it in the beginning and we know we're seeing the big result in our mind. You don't see it when you put it in the ground or when you plow the ground or you disc it or any of that. You see it 
in the harvest time. You see it in your mind. There is something to God telling you to give a certain amount or do a certain thing, and you can't see nothing. And it makes you feel stupid. It makes you feel like, am I crazy? I said someone talked to me about this yesterday. And, you know, God gave her an assignment to give a certain thing to a certain person, and that assignment seemed like it was, like, this is way too much. I can hardly live, let alone, you know, do this. This is way too much. And she, she said, okay, God, I'll do it. It's the obedient heart is what he's looking for. And, and how we know this is there's scriptures that let us know how this is taking place. It says the obedient will be blessed. That's right. The obedient are blessed, right? So, so she decides that, yeah, she's going to do this. Well, the need uh, rerouted, and so that person didn't need that anymore. And she kind of got a relief and said, but what if but maybe I didn't hear God to begin with? Uh, and I said, oh, no, I think you heard God. Because he's put me in that position before where he required something of me, and it was a test of my heart. Yep. And I said, okay, I'll be, be, I'll be obedient. <laughs> you know, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, but he was testing that. And then it released, and I didn't have to give the money or, or, or do the thing because the situation for the person changed. But it was a heart check for me. See, so she shared this with me yesterday. So you have your finances. There is a fear that needs to lift off the churches when it comes to finances. This is craziness. Uh, we have more faith to go gamble. We have more faith. The world, they just go spend. They just, because they're just scattering their seed. When it comes to being specific about it, that's when we start getting jiggy. We just say, ah. Is this the right thing? Is this the right time? Well, he lays it out in his word, the different kinds of givings. And then we need to be able to hear from him and, and get the soil ready. Don't just haphazardly give. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's just like scattering seed. It'd be better even for you to hold on to your finances and set them to the side until you've heard from the Lord. We had somebody come up and say, I, I don't know. I found the Lord told me I'm supposed to give you $5,000. I don't. I think it was God. I don't know. Well, first of all, I'm like, why are you telling me this? Because you usually don't announce that to the person or, or whatever it is um, uh, up front. But they seriously were, were searching to see if they heard God. Well, in the end, we ended up working them through that, and it wasn't God. And we told them, that ain't God. Yep. Right? Because there's, there's sometimes we'll get emotionally excited on something. We'll feel guilty for something. We'll feel like we're going to perform our way into something and we'll give money out of a performance. So when we come back after Summerfest, we're going to talk about right attitudes of sowing. We could even back it up further and, and talk about getting the ground ready to begin with for you even to, to plant that soil in and having your ground ready in your heart to be able to receive seed from God. You have to have well-adaptable soil to be able to receive and hold on and retain that in order to take it to a harvest. And, and so this is a, this is a subject that um, can get touchy. It's a subject that can be annoying. I'm just giving you all these disclosures. But this is what it should be. It should be exciting. Amen. But because if we don't gravitate toward exciting and joyful on that side, that just shows something's off. Something's on. Wouldn't you want that short up? Yeah, Wouldn't you want? Even when I talk about it, there's some of you at Run Stream Mind, oh, they're going to try to get us ready to give a bunch of money. I don't get you ready for anything. You can be obedient to God or disobedient. to That's on your plate. That's not on mine. Right? I just preach the word. You are the farmer. You are the steward of the finances that come in your hand. And you want to be obedient to his word. For you and his word to work that out. I'm not here trying to work out your finances, but what I want to see, and I know Holy Spirit wants to see, a movement of freedom when it comes to giving, of our time, of our emotions, of our care, of our prayers, of our finances. Anything that we can use as seed, that we take another look and say, hold on a second. The thing I'm holding in my hand could just be that acorn. Yeah. It could be that mustard seed that's about to turn into something really big. And you won't see it. Um, was it Oral Roberts would always say, you know, hold on, because today could be your day 
for a miracle. He'd always end his show um, with saying something like that, that, you know, don't stop. He would put courage into people because today could be your day for a miracle because sometimes you're just about to harvest and you don't know it, right? right? It's like that next day you could have went out and picked that thing, but you stopped. You stopped. Yeah. Salvation power yeah. is also for prospering us in all things and always at all times, according to Corinthians. Amen. Salvation power. I also want to show you in this series, um, because some people think that when I'm out evangelizing or sharing the gospel with people and people are coming to Christ, that somehow that's some magical formula of something. Um, that's just so uniquely woven to an evangelist. No, it's seed time and harvest. Yeah. And he told us all to go into the world and preach the gospel, right? Yeah. He told us all to, which means we're all evangelists of some sort. Yeah. We just got to know how to sow. And when we sow in, in, into people's life, we need to release that, and we need to know how to let the Holy Spirit do the work. And then we need to know when it's time to take our combines and run over a situation and harvest it. You don't just go after just anything, any time. So there are some things that we'll be talking about in the future. But I, I felt like that's enough for this morning because I just want to get your, you thinking on it. And then we're going to get into um, releasing us from the negative feelings regarding it. So think about the seed that's in your checkbook or on your credit card, probably a better way to say it, right now, your financial seed. What were your plans for that today? And are they the plans that the Lord has? Or are they your plans? You ever think of it like that? Uh, this is where it says, the sower went out to sow seed. We're sowers. And this is where it also says, he gives seed to who? The sower. So we know we're the sowers, and he's going to give us the seed. So what you're carrying in your wallet, your purse, when it comes to finances, is seed that was given to you by your father. Amen. Right? He gave you the ability to work. He gave you the ability. He gave you those gifts in your mind. I mean, we can go back to everything that he gets all the glory for. So, and the word that has come forth, what just happened when we had um, the special speakers here with Calvin and, and, and Brian and, and that ministry team, what just happened for was seeded into you. Guess what? It's going to grow, right? And so what are, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. How are you going to handle that? It could, it could just die off. This is why sometimes people go from one conference to the next, and they get excited, and then it drops. And then they get excited, and not, they don't bring it to a full harvest. Prophecies that are spoken over you shouldn't just be a whim in the moment. It should be written down, and then it's like this thing is going to come to pass. Yeah. Some will be like an oak. 40 years. Some will, will be, you know, maybe like a radish. It's like, wow, he just spoke that, and it just, next week, it took care of itself. This is amazing. Amen. So we have to know how this harvest thing works. This is going to empower us to hear the voice of God, Amen. right? Amen. This is not me telling you what you should be doing. This is empowering us so you hear the voice of God so you know what you should be doing. That's what we're going to do through this series. And I believe he's going to loose uh, some finances over into our hands. And he's going to loose uh, some other things, some life change over into us because we have sowed seed on its behalf and we're in that process. And this is also to help encourage you, don't faint. Amen. Yes. Don't faint. Amen. Do not lose courage. Do not faint. Do not allow it to be something that it will take you out. Do not allow it to be something where you relax on this thing. Amen. Amen. You get tenacious about it. Yeah? Amen. So as the church gave, uh, like I said, I mean, we got some buildings that need to be paid for. So it's like we sowed seed. Like seed is going to come into our hands. Amen. Right? And, and I didn't see it today. That's all right. It's on its way. Yeah. You know, the scripture says you plant seed in the ground and you go to bed. You, not know, you know not how it grows under there. God does that part. Yep. Right? And then when it comes up out of the soil, you attend to it. Yep. 
and you keep doing the next right thing in that. And God is going to do that with this body. Some things are going to come very soon, and some things are going to come down the line, but they are coming. Let's stand. For whatever you sow, that is only what you will reap. There's a, there's a view of something that happens when that's read, like I said, that causes us to go, oh, snap, I have sowed some pretty bad things. Because the way the brain works is you will think of the negative before the positive. That's just like if you had some occurrences of, of abuse when you were a kid, uh, and you say, well, what was your childhood like? Those things will come forward. Well, guess what? There were millions of memories besides that that were good memories, but you won't remember that. You'll remember this. Right? So, so there is some seed, though, that we have sowed that we know this was good seed. God got it into our hands. It was financial. It was word. It was repositioning. There's all these different things that, that took place. And maybe we've backed off and haven't even checked on it. Let's agree in prayer right now that God will bring those things back to mind. Amen. Yeah? Amen. And save that harvest. First of all, Lord God, uh, we just put out our hands when it comes to finances especially. We put out our hands and we ask that you purify them. Purify our hearts and the use of our hands to get wealth into other people's hands, to get wealth into the body of Christ, to get wealth into our family, to get wealth where it's supposed to go, where it's been designated by you and we're just the stewards of it. Purify us, forgive us for misusing the seed. Forgive us for not seeing the seed for what it is inside of that check, inside of that, that uh, thing that we've done for our family, the seed that we've planted, inside of those words we spoke that were life, there's huge things inside of that. Amen. And they are going to come to pass. Amen. They're going to come to pass. And so we're, we're seeders. We, we, the sower went out to sow seed. So some of you need some seed in your hands financially. Some of you need a word from God for a situation that you're like, I don't even know what to plant here. I don't even know what kind of seed fixes this. He's going to get that over to you. Any type of seed you're missing right now, he promises that he gives seed to the sower. Check it out, though. When you're sowing for him, his kingdom, he gives seed to the sower. That's a part of his kingdom. He doesn't just go flaunting his seed around to just anybody. He's very specific. Oh, you're going to sow that? Well, then I want to get that into your hands. Yeah. See? If you're just like, give me something. Give me something. No, no, no. You're not a sower. He's not just going to dump a whole bunch of stuff on you unless you're a sower. You're not going to get a whole bunch of revelation in the word unless you already have it mindset like, just give it to me, Lord God, and I will distribute. Yes. So let's put our hands out. For those of you, you need seed. You need seed. You need life change seed. I don't care what category it falls in. Everything comes under seed time and harvest. It's not just money. We agree right now, Lord God, that you are the one, you're the Lord of the harvest. That's what your name is, Jesus. And we come to your office and we say, yes, we will farm for you. Yes, Lord God, we'll get out there for the soil that you've given us. Yes, Lord, we will put, we just need some seed and we'll go sow. We'll, we need some seed and we'll go sow. So forgive us, Lord, for the times that you gave us seed and we didn't go sow it. You gave us word and we didn't speak it. You gave us items and we didn't use them. You gave us uh, livelihood and we didn't appropriate it right. So now that's under the blood of Jesus and we're asking, Lord God, let's do this thing again. Get some finances into our hands and, and some word into our hands and some change and some other things, Lord God, that each individual knows what their needs are. A seed 
But that means as we ask and we receive that, we've just identified ourselves as sowers. It means your intent is not to hold on to everything. I got it. I'm a, I'm a hoarder. I'm thrifty. I'm um, all those different words that just say it's mine, and I get it, and uh, I'm not here to give out. Father God, uh, forgive us for those attitudes. We want to be the sowers. Good stewards and only directed by you because you are Lord of the harvest. Thank you. We receive it right now. We receive it right now. And I believe in Jesus' name that there's some of you, he'll give it to you in a dream. He'll give you a, a vision. I believe some of you, it's going to come where you'll just get a, I mean, a rhema word is good seed where you just go, ha. Oh. That is awesome. Thank you, God. That's precious seed. I'm going to plant that and re-speak that, and I'm going to declare that. Thank you. So precious, so precious. I believe that's going to be downloaded. Can you believe with me? That that's going to be downloaded to us. And see, when we miss the connection spot where we believe for this stuff and we forget where it came from and how it got into our hand and how precious it is and how big it is, like the acorn, you're holding it, it's far bigger than what you see. It's far bigger. You better go out and look at some oak trees. You better go look it's just to get it in your mind. Yeah? That's why sometimes when I'm believing for something, I just go out and look at other people who already have it, talk to them, dig and stuff, touch the thing, drive it, do whatever it is I'm believing for. I want to see this because I'm looking at this little seed and it's going to produce that. I need to have that picture in my mind. Yeah? Yeah. I just want to declare over this church, this is a prosperous people. Amen. Not only are we prosperous, we're obedient. And the obedient are blessed. It just comes automatic. It's not a cocky saying. It's a true statement. And we thank you. The wealth comes into our hands of all sorts, all things in all ways at all times so that we might give and, and, and then build. Farmers don't give all their seed away. They take some of that and they plant again. And then also they don't give all the finances away. They build the farm with it. They, they continue to take care of what's going on. So show us how to balance that, Lord God. And lay it on our hearts in any area that we've been disobedient with our seed. We want to be corrected. Don't you want to be corrected? Yes. Invite that. And he'll show you, Lord, show us. And we believe, and we're coming up out of unbelief. No doubt when it comes to our needs being met. For the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not even want. There's no want here. And we declare not what is, we declare what will be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so study on this. Start looking at this and start looking at how do you plant seed? How, what, is, what things are seed to you? How, whether it be finances, like I said, that's an easy one because it's tangible right there in front of you. But there's many other things. God has given you seed when you asked him for it. I've seen you in the prayer lines. And all of a sudden you asked him for it. He didn't get, hand you money because that wasn't the seed you were needing. You're like, I need a rhema word. That's what I need. I need the seed of your word to be planted. Give it to me. And we go, yeah. And then two weeks later, if I asked you what that word is, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. It was good, though. I remember it was good. You mishandled your seed. Okay? He's going to show us this, and it's going to break us free. Because God has just had, he just had a word over Pastor and I, which means that word is over you. And we're going to go through in this series, and we're going to go through those different words real briefly and show. He said houses and lands. He said home for the homeless. He said expansions. He said a new building. Don't know if that means a new building from this one or another one added to us, but guess what? I'm open. <laughs> I'm open to whatever God wants to do, right? And so, <clears throat> but if we, that would be like looking at, oh, see, we're going to have this great big harvest. See all the things that were said. I'll, we don't know how to do the front part. It would be good if we shored up on this part before we ever get to that big picture. Yes and amen? amen. All right. Be blessed. You're highly favored.